Well, excellence in agronomy, in my view, is probably one of the oldest, most innovative approaches that uh, the agricultural research community is embarking on. To try and uh, solve a problem that has been there for almost half a century. How do we bridge the gap between the good science that happens in these science institutes and what happens in that farm in the village? And essentially, what is agronomy? Agronomy is those decisions that a farmer makes from the time they decide they're going to grow a crop. What will I grow? How do I prepare the land? How do I put crop nutrients or fertilizer? How do I control pests? And ultimately, how do I harvest and take this crop off the land? So we are trying to influence those decisions. And across the world, there are gaps that we think as excellence in agronomy we can meet. We are here to improve yields in a way that supports climate change adaptation and mitigation within planetary boundaries. And this is excellence in agronomy. We are working on delivering for the world, particularly the global south, the support so that the next generation is fed and has new livelihood opportunities, soils, health is improved as we go along. And I think we have all the different pieces are starting to come together. So the issue that we're trying to identify is where are those modules or pieces that can fit together well, uh, that can be easily pulled. It's almost like a library of, of books that can be checked out and used by whoever's out there. You know, it needs to be open. It needs to be um, pieces of the same puzzle that can be then locked, interlocked much more easily than we're able to do today. That's where the value of excellence in agronomy is. You know, making that big puzzle with, with all of these different, so far, individual bags of puzzle pieces, trying to bring them together and fit them in a bigger piece that's a whole. Over the next few days, we're going to have a gathering of almost 100 people from every region of the world, gathered around the table to try and develop solutions for one of the biggest problems in the world. How do we irreversibly transform agricultural systems across the global south through improving agronomic practices of small-scale farmers? This is the short that we have. And if we get it right, agriculture and food systems will never be the same again. So we are looking forward to really using this time to transform the agricultural systems across the world through sustainable intensification and climate change adaptation that will change the lives of farmers in the global south irreversibly. Can we take a seat please? Welcome, 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 welcome. I was almost going to say, wow, finally. You know why I'm saying that? In our incubation proposal, we've budgeted for two workshops. The incubation phase, you know, it started in July. So Excellence in Agronomy no. is actually a global program that will operate in about six regions of the world. And these regions are Latin America on the one side. And then on the African continent, we've got two main regions, Western Central Africa and then Eastern Southern Africa. Then for our North African uh, colleagues, we've got a region that covers North Africa, but also Central West Asia. And then we've got two regions in Asia, that is Southeast Asia and South Asia. So this program is a global program that will look at all those regions and really try to respond to the challenges that still exist in advancing agronomy. In 2022, when we are launching this initiative, a lot has changed. A lot has changed in terms of communication technologies. A lot has changed in terms of our ability to process large amounts of data and convert it into insights that can help farmers make simple decisions. We want to leverage the power of technology right now, which allows us to really get good insights from the data about climate, about soils, about crop growth, etc., and use that capacity, that huge computational power and capacity that exists today, that didn't exist 20, 30 years ago, to really generate these insights that we can now deliver to farmers. So whereas in the past we might have needed uh, a thousand extension agents to reach a million farmers, 
With technology, we could actually do more farmers with fewer extension agents because we can communicate to people using uh, mobile telephones, using SMS, using interactive voice recording. So we are looking at a multi-pronged approach of delivering these insights to farmers and also, most importantly, getting feedback. We're often dealing with little data that needs to be um, uh, much better formatted, much more uniformly and quickly actionable. Um, and it often isn't. Um, and so, you know, we call that interoperability, being able to uh, not only find the data quickly, being able to download it, you know, that means it needs to be open, uh, being able to then action on it. Once we describe the same, you know, we have the same formats to be able to reuse that very quickly and aggregate data quickly because that's what's needed. We have developed this with MIT, the, the Global Engineering Lab at MIT, and these drippers operate at 85% lower pressure. The problem is, you know, in this Morocco, in this region, the problem is soil erosion is very high. Okay. Yeah? And then the problem is very uh, variable rainfall. Rainfall pattern is like a very, not so the drought is very often. Farmers have to face new climates and they have new market opportunities um, all the time. So it's really about supporting adaptation so that people can solve the problems for themselves and that there is at the same time more genetic options so seed systems are working there is better improved soil water conservation and I think our capacity building around this for our national partners working with our private sector partners uh, will ultimately bring us to farmers. So EIA tries to make progress in different impact areas. And examples are uh, improving farmers' livelihoods, improving farmers' food security situation, improving the resilience of farming systems uh, with respect to climate change and, and climate shocks, improving environmental health. So it's quite, it's quite broad and, and indeed quite ambitious as well. This program is starting up now, so in terms of reaching those targets we're, we're at the start but at the same time of course we build on a lot of existing knowledge and existing partnerships as well in in the different regions where the program is is working to to actually make a difference uh, in the farmers fields with the farmers working with the farmers working with the extension agents um, how do we do that so so we need to make sure first of all that Whatever we're doing in terms of reusing that data, in terms of the analytics results that come out of aggregating the data, running our models, are they really going to make a difference? You know, how will they interact with this? How, if we're talking about advisories going to farmers, how are they going to interact with it? You know, it, it's not just, okay, here's the right amount of fertilizer to add in this particular location. How do we bundle all of that together in a way that makes sense and is temporally valid? So at a certain time, this is what the farmer needs to be doing. If the conditions change, our recommendations need to change as well. We don't have all the answers right now, but this is what Excellence in Agronomy is trying to get to. We know that farmer communities, they're very diverse. And so when you make recommendations, you cannot go to such communities with just one blanket recommendation. You need to try and find a way to tailor your advice, tailor your recommendations to the farmer context, to the, the, the farmer's way of thinking, if you like. Excellence in Agronomy is building on you know, many decades of work and partnerships. And so that's why I have confidence that we are going to deliver.